I want to talk to the women who are watching right now, but I also want the men watching to listen as well, so they can understand the challenges that women face in today's world. Today's segment is for women because you are often neglected in your focus on caring for others and all of your responsibilities. In fact, many of the women I counsel are overloaded with too many demands, and so they struggle with guilt and worry and a sense of failure. They'll often take care of others, but leave no time to take care of themselves. And as Christians, the stakes are even higher because we're taught about sacrificial living and serving others. And so we should ourselves into a breakdown. And one of the things I've noticed about women, we are terrible at self-care. And we struggle with feeling guilty if we're to be so selfish as to care about ourselves. So I'm not gonna tell you all the things that you have to do to be a better leader or pastor or mother or a Christian or whatever the tons of hats that you're wearing. And I know you, you wear many hats, don't you? Today, women are expected to be educated and successful as professionals, but we're also expected to be great wives and mothers. And doesn't it seem as if we just can't win? We're judged if we're too career focused, but we're also judged if we choose to be stay-at-home moms. And so we struggle with feeling like we're a failure in both realms. So how do we pursue our calling that God has placed on our lives, whether as a professional or a pastor or a stay-at-home mom? And how do we move forward in spite of how we might be judged or criticized or misunderstood? Our successes and failures are rarely based on how much we know, our skills or our expertise. It's almost always rooted in the internal stuff, what I call heart matters. Dealing with the internal issues, our character, our motivations, and emotional maturity, that's going to exponentially increase our effectiveness at home, or in the workplace, or in ministry. So what does a healthy heart look like? First of all, invest in the time to heal your heart. Make the effort to reconcile your issues and all your unresolved traumas and hurts. What is it that triggers those feelings of insecurity? Why do you let the judgments of others affect you so much? What's preventing you from being the woman of God you're called to be? Get honest with yourself and take responsibility for your own well-being and happiness. And don't be afraid to get professional counseling to help you. Secondly, be grounded in your identity in Christ, not in what people think of you. Nobody understands you like Jesus does and nobody loves you like he does. If God knows all of my ugly parts and he still loves me and thinks I'm pretty awesome, why do I need to get my sense of worth from others? If you're looking for the approval of others, then you're letting them define your sense of worth, not God. Remember, you are a daughter of the Most High King. Thirdly, develop healthy and supportive relationships, especially with other women. We're all wired to need relationship. The healthiest people are those who are surrounded by thriving relationships. Research shows that those of us who are connected in healthier relationships live longer, are happier, and overall we're just healthier. So don't do it alone. And please, can we celebrate and support each other as women rather than tearing each other down in our insecurities and jealousy? We tend to compare ourselves with other women and see them as rivals. We struggle with feeling inadequate in the shadow of an amazing woman. And so we can be downright mean to each other. We can judge each other harshly and that's not what we should do. Let's stop with that already. Fourthly, influence through prayer, integrity, and character. I remember back in my 20s, a colleague of mine called me shrill. I was terribly offended at that time. But in retrospect, I saw what she meant. I was so determined to make a mark in the world that I thought being the loudest and most aggressive meant success. But now I know I influence best through how I live my life with integrity and character, how I quietly love others, and how I pay, pray for people without any fanfare. Trust me, God's noticing you, and He will expand your circle of influence without you having to toot your own horn. And finally, be who you are. People don't expect you to have it all together. They're actually much more drawn to people who are authentic and willing to expose their hearts to them. Always be willing to admit that you don't know and to acknowledge when you've messed up because truly great impact only happens when you present your authentic and perfect selves to the world and you allow yourself to live from your humanity and honest struggle. So take down your walls and remove your masks. Aren't you tired of pretending? Ladies, let's all spur each other on to be authentic women after God's own heart. I'm Dr. Lynn.